Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. So in the previous video we have learned about the life cycle hook of the constructor and also the NG on unit also we have learned. Now in this video we will learn about the another two types life cycle hooks that is NG on changes and also the NG on destroy. So what does this NG on changes when it will be useful. So the NG on changes method runs after any component inputs have changed so that means now here we are having this input variable right input title is equal to empty whenever this title variable has been changed then this ng on changes method will be fired this step happens before the components own template is checked so this just like the ng on in it also whenever this comp comp template component template html file has been checked then only before that one only it will be fired this means that you can update the component state based on its initial input values so that means you can update the component state before the template update only. During initialization, the first ng on changes runs before ng on init. So here that means ng before the ng on init, ng on changes fires. Why? Because first time input value has been updated, right? So the first time the ng on changes will fire. After that only ng on init will be fired. So that is one thing. So here I what I will try to do is so here you will be having ng on changes. Ng on changes. Now this is our method and here we will be writing console.log I will use console.log ng on change fired ok ng on change fired I will give this all the things let's close it and here let's go to the inspect element and here in the console in the console ng on it fired ng on change fired yeah here if I refresh this page so here you will be able to see first time the constructor has been called then immediately ng on change is fired. So that means ng on changes has been fired and afterwards only ng on it has been fired. So that means first the constructor will be executed and now if you have any input properties or anything then ng on changes will be fired then afterwards ng on it will be fired. So for example let's say that you don't have a input variable let's assume and here I am commenting out this one all. okay and I will comment out this one also title. Now let's see that ng on change will fire or not. So now if you try to see here ng on changes has not been fired. Why? Because there is no input variable. Now constructor has been called and immediately ng on it is also fired. Now if you try to have this input variable. So that means if a component has at least two input variable means then ng on change will be fired before the ng on it. So fine now you will be, know you are able to understand about this ng on changes. Now inspecting the changes. So what are the changes that has been uh, modified so if you want to check means so ng on changes method accepts one simple change argument so it will take one argument that is called a simple changes argument this object is a record mapping each ma component input name to a simple change object so each simple change contains the inputs previous value its current value and a flag for whether this is the first time the input has been changed so for example let's say that i will try to show you uh, the changes so what you will be having so you will be having the changes that is simple changes okay this should be imported from the angular core okay so this should be imported from the angular core now here we got the simple changes right so let's console the simple changes so here console.log of changes i told you right first time you will be having the current value the previous value and also the first time so here you will be able to see an object has been fired and here this is a title of simple change and in this title you will be able to see that it is having for this title current value it's an angular basics previous value doesn't have anything why because it is the first time it has been changed and the last one is first change it is true yes it has been changed now in our app component i will try to add a button so that we'll be able to see so i am adding a button here change title okay and here when i click click is equal to change title and I am using some normal method and let's go to our app.component.ts file and here I will be using change title okay and this dot title this dot title is equal to random string I will use like this and here I will use math dot random okay so this one all the time it will be changed now this is a change title now if i click on this one so first time we got this title and the previous value and all those things is undefined right now if you try to click on change title 
so now here again ng on change has been fired so if you try to see here now the input value has been changed because of that reason ng on change is fired so now if you try to see here this is the change right and in this title you will be able to see the current value is this one the previous value is angular basics and now this time the first value is false so now this is the simple changes now whenever you are having multiple input elements means you will be having multiple objects now you can loop over this each one using the in for in and you can get the get those values so this is one of the simple change if you provide an alias for any input property the simple changes record still uses the typescript property name only so this property name only it will take when you use the alias property also rather than taking the alias so that is also one thing which you need to understand so this is all about the ng on changes now the another one before closing i want to explain you about the ng on destroy also so what is this ng on destroy life cycle hook will do ng on destroy method runs once just before a component has is destroyed Angular destroys a component when it is no longer shown on the page, such as being hidden by ng if or upon navigating to another page. So when this ng on destroy will fight. So I will try to show you this ng on destroy. ng on destroy. Okay, ng on destroy. So this is our method. And here console dot log component destroyed. So this will not fight at any time. So this will not be fight. So if you try to see here. Uh, yeah, if I try to refresh this page, constructor is called ng on change is fired, ng on init is fired. That's it. So when will this ng on destroy will fire is? So whenever we are trying to destroy this component. For example, here I can have something like uh, button. I will use button toggle toggle component. So I am using toggle component, and here I will use click. Click is equal to toggle, okay, hook. So I will use this method, and let's go to the app dot component dot ts file, and here I will use the toggle hook, and here I will use is active or anything, is active is equal to false, and I will do something like this dot is active is equal to true, or otherwise. I will do a toggle something like not of this dot is active. Okay, so now when you try to see here, so this time when it when it was there, so the now ng on destroy has not been fired. Now when I am trying to click on the toggle, now when I am trying to click on the toggle, what is happening? Okay, we haven't used this ng on destroy, right? Sorry, ng if. Now here I can write ng if ng if is active. Okay, so I am using this is active. Now, if you try to see here, the first time it is false, or otherwise, first time what we what we will do is we will make it as a true, so that we can able to see the component. Yeah. So now we will be able to see construct has been called ng on change fired ng on it fired. So fine, it will be working fine. Now when you click on this toggle component, see this time the component destroy has been fired. So that means whenever this component is leaving this view pane or viewport, so then this ng on destroy will be fired. So we have also an alternative to this ng on destroy method. That is, you can inject an instance of destroy ref. So you can register a callback to be invoked upon components destruction by calling the on destroy method of destroy ref. So that means this there is also an alternative for this one to write this uh, ng on destroy. So here you can inject the inject the destroy ref. So here you can inject something like private. Private destroy ref, so you can have destroy ref. This is of type destroy ref. It should be imported from the Angular core. So this one is also now using this one. So now you can pa you can you can do in the constructor itself. So now here you can write destroy wherever you want. You can use it not only here. So you can use it on the ng on in it also. Destroy ref dot on destroy. So you will be having a callback method. So on destroy. So this will take a callback method. So this one will be executed whenever this. Uh, what I can say is, so destroy ref fired. So this one also fires on ng on destroy only. So now if you try to refresh this page, so this one is all okay. When I click on here, see both component destroy has been fired and also the destroy ref is also fired. So you can pass the destroy ref instance to functions or classes outside your component also. 
So using this pattern, if you have other code that should run some cleanup behavior when the component is destroyed means. So for example, you can pass this destroy ref to other classes or anything. So for example, let's say that uh, you when you when you uh, remove this component, so you have some other uh, cleaning functionalities in another code in another file or anything means and then this destroy ref will be useful. Whereas in ngr destroy it will work in this place only, right? So this destroy ref you can pass it to other components or to other functions or anything. So that function will be executed immediately whenever this one is, whenever this component is destroyed. You can also use destroy ref to set up code clo close to clean up the code rather than putting all cleanup code in the ng on destroy method. So that is one thing. So these are the these are the things which we want to discuss. So one is ng on changes. Ng on changes will fire whenever the input value changes and it will have an argument that is nothing but simple changes argument. It will consist of the current value, previous value and also the flag. And we are having an ng on destroy which will fire when the component is destroyed. Alternative to this one is the destroy ref which is an H which you can inject it through the constructor. And this one you can pass it to any other class or outside of the class or outside of the file you can pass it. And whenever this component is destroyed in that, in that file that logic will be executed. So these are all the different things. Uh, these are the true life strike looks which we have learned it. So what I will do is I will commit this code in our new branch that is nothing but 14 hyphen video. So 14 hyphen video. And these are nothing but ng on changes, ng on changes and ng on destroy. Okay. So here I will be providing this GitHub repository URL in the description below. Whoever may be, whoever want to refer this code or anything means so you can clone that repository URL and you can check that code. And as usual, if you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.